Hi, I'm Sean Carruthers, and welcome to How Do I on Butterscotch.com. In this series, we're taking a look at how to set up a home network. In this episode specifically, we're taking a look at some of the other things you can put onto your home network. Now, you already know about your desktop PC and your wireless notebook. These are the reasons you may have set up your home network in the first place, because you wanted to share data between these two devices and the internet. But there's other things that you can put onto your home network as well to make it even more useful to you. For example, you may have an iPad. You can connect this up to the home network as well using the Wi-Fi connection, using exactly the same process that you used for setting up your notebook. You can actually use the same process to set up your iPhone or any other devices that use wireless connectivity to connect to the internet. Now one of the types of devices you may want to add to your network is network attached storage, and that is exactly what it sounds like. It's storage on your network. In this case, we have a four disk storage device. It holds a lot of data. There's ones available for consumers that hold a single disk and a little bit of data, but it's just data that you may want to share all around your network. So for example, movies or your home photographs. Each of these can then be accessed from any of the other computers in your house. And as with any other device that connects to your network, it has Ethernet ports on the back. So you can connect this directly into your router and then share that information that's on board. Of course, something that's more common in most houses is gaming consoles. So we have a Wii here, which connects wirelessly to your home network. And we also have an Xbox 360 here, which has an Ethernet port up top here, which will connect directly into there. Another thing that's useful to have on your home network is a printer, whether it's a laser printer like this one, or a cheaper and more flexible inkjet printer. Typically, laser printers will come with Ethernet ports on the back. Now while there are some inkjet printers that do have Ethernet built right onto the printer itself, for the most part they don't come with it because inkjet printers tend to be fairly inexpensive and adding an Ethernet port adds cost to the printer. The other way to deal with this is by looking at the router itself. Now most inkjet printers connect to the computer via USB and a growing number of routers actually have a USB port on the back like this one. So you'll see on the back here we've got USB right here. What this allows you to do is connect the USB port from your printer directly to this one on the router, and that will then share the printer around your network to all the other devices on board. This is also something that you'll see on Apple's Airport Extreme devices as well, the ability to share either an external hard drive that uses USB or the printer. The other types of devices that you may want to add to your network are media players. For example, there's the Sonos system, which actually finds music on the notebooks and the desktop machines around your house, and then streams it wirelessly to the Sonos media players located around your house. There's also the Apple TV, a video player that connects to your television, but also connects to your network via Ethernet or via wireless networking. And this can actually stream videos directly from the internet to your Apple TV, or download things for later use. Anyways, that's a look at some of the other devices you can add to your home network. Don't forget to check out the other parts in the series where we actually show you what you need to get the home network set up and how to configure it.